we're going to talk about three different things in this webinar, your credit score. We're going to talk about the credit report, what's in it, what's not in it, how do you have access to the credit report. We're also going to talk about the credit score, what's in your score, what's not in your score, what's a good score, what's a bad score, and those things. And then lastly, application. How does this apply to you? And so that way, when you leave the webinar tonight, you're going to be able to take this information and already begin to use it right out of the gate. Now, for those of you who are part of the My Money Wellness uh, team or portal, thank you very much for being a part of, as users of My Money Wellness. And this is just a great reminder that we have lots of short videos to watch, three to five minutes in length. Uh, and this is a self-paced guided web website for you to be able to learn all the things financial that you would like to learn to keep you up to date with what is a, with My Money Wellness. Now, I know you're at a credit score webinar, but I do think it's vitally important that we just hit pause and talk about the Dave Ramsey seven baby steps. And I'm going to bring these baby steps back into play at the end of this credit score discussion because the credit score does play a critical role with this. We're not going to spend a lot of time on the seven baby steps, but let me quickly rapid fire walk you through those. Baby step one is $1,000 cash in the bank. Before we do anything else, first thing we do is $1,000. The second thing we do is the debt snowball. That's where we pay off all of our debts, smallest to largest, list them in order, everything but the house, pay minimums on everything but the smallest debt, and then attack everything one debt at a time. So you go for your small debt first, and your next smallest debt, and your next smallest debt until you've paid off all of your debts, everything but the house. Then we take baby step three, raise your emergency fund from $1,000 to three to six months of expenses. Baby step four, 15% for retirement. Baby step five, save for the kids' college. Baby step six, pay off the house early. And then baby step seven, build wealth and give. Now again, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on those tonight, but we will come back to this and show you how the credit score impacts these baby steps. When it comes to your credit bureau, there are three major bureaus that pull your credit report. There is Equifax, Experian and TransUnion. Now there are other credit vendors out there, but these are the three that are widely used across America, whether it's for pulling your information for a potential loan, for employment, for insurance. These are the three major credit bureaus. Now when it comes to your credit score, your lowest score possible is a 300. Your highest is an 850. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. The federal government allows you to pull one free credit report per year per bureau. So when you, that means you can pull one almost once a quarter. So if you want to pull Equifax, three months later pull an Experian, three months later pull a TransUnion, you can pull one credit report for free, doesn't cost you any money, and be able to see what's been going on over the last 10 year span with your credit. Now, you will not show you your score unless you pay for it. You can pay to see your credit score, but just to see your credit report to make sure it's accurate, to make sure you're not uh, being looked at for identity theft, definitely you want to be pulling your credit report at least a minimum of once a year, but we recommend you pulling all three throughout the year so you can be on top of this. Now, as a part of your credit bureau, we recommend pulling your free credit report from this website, annualcreditreport.com. This website is sponsored, if you see the bottom of this graphic, annualcreditreport.com is sponsored by Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. And so they're the ones that put this website together. You are probably familiar over the last couple of years, whether it's on TV or on the web, on the radio, lots of other places have been saying, go here to get your free credit report. Well, we here at My Money Wellness highly encourage you to go to annual credit report dot com to pull your credit report. When you do, you'll simply select the state that you're in. They'll ask you for a few more pieces of information, and then instantly you'll get your free report on a PDF. You can then save or print or whatever you want to do, but you'll have then access to your credit report. Now, on occasion, when you're going to pull for your credit report, they'll ask you some questions, and then it's going to say, well, sorry, we cannot give it to you right now. We need more information. Now the normal response is then to go, uh-oh, 
this website's trying to grab my information. Maybe this isn't a trustworthy website. You know, what it's wanting to do is make sure they give the right credit report to the right person because they want to make sure that your credit report doesn't go in someone else's hands for identity theft or to violate your privacy. So if, if you get that, which is which can happen, we had one of our coaches this week pulled three credit reports, all three, two of them he got right away. The other one, he got the message, you need to fill out this information, and within a week or two, we'll, eat, we'll mail you your credit report. That's perfectly legit, that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that if you get that. It usually happens in one of two instances. A, you have a common name like a John Smith, or a Frank, whoever, or Jane Doe. If it's a common name, sometimes they'll do that because it's very easy to get uh, the wrong one. Or if you've had credit report issues in the past, either a fraud alert's been put on there or a hawk alert's been put on your credit report, someone's tried to get on there before and they shouldn't have, they're going to really want to make sure. So usually those are the reasons why they would do that, so just to let you know. If you look at your credit bureau and you're going, wait a minute, there's a mistake, and by the way, according to the Federal Reserve, 79% of Americans have mistakes on their credit bureaus. If you find a mistake or an inaccuracy on the annual credit report website, it will give you an option to notify the credit bureaus that there has been a mistake on the credit report, and then you can begin taking care of that right away. And with identity theft being the number one white-collar crime over the last 12 years, according to the Federal Trade Commission, this is something to take very very seriously. Next we're going to talk about your credit score. And let's first talk about what's not in your score. What is not in your score is things like how much you make, where you work, your race, your sex, um, your religion. None of that plays a part of your credit score. Okay, so how much you have in your bank account doesn't play in your credit score, which is probably a good thing because it would mean for a lot of us we wouldn't have a very good credit score. The five, there are five major components of a credit score. Let me go through those with you. 35% of your credit score is based on your debt payment history. So if you're paying your debts on time, that means that's going to help your credit score. If you're missing payments, it's going to hurt your score. 30% of your credit score is based on your debt levels. The more debt you have, likely your debt could go down. I have a client right now who her credit score went down, and it wasn't because she was missing payments. It was because she had borrowed too much money. 15% of your credit score is based on the length of time in debt. So the longer that you're in debt, the better your score can be. 10% is based on new debt. So this Christmas, if you get five department store cards trying to get great deals, your credit score will probably go down because a credit score does not like to see lots of new credit applications. And then 10% based on type of debt. Is it a mortgage loan? Is it a credit card? Is it a foreclosure? Is it a bankruptcy? It could positive or negatively affect your credit score. Well, out of those five components, what was the one word that I said out of each one of those? Debt. Here's the interesting paradigm. If you were to ask any financial profession, whether it's a financial coach, an insurance agent, a banker, uh, you know, financial planner, if you ask anybody out there what is the number one goal most consumers have when it comes to their finances, you're going to get almost unanimously to be able to pay off my debt, to become debt free. Well, you know what? What happens if you pay off all of your debt? What does that do to your credit score? You won't have a credit score. Your credit score is going to be zero. And so when people hear that, wait a minute, if I want to be debt-free, I'm going to have a zero credit score, why do I want to do this? Well, the good news is that just today, if you were to say, you know what, I'm going to follow these baby steps, does not mean you're going to automatically today have a zero credit score. Let me walk you through the baby steps and how this would look should you choose to no longer go into debt, to stop borrowing money, and to use these baby step principles. If you do baby step one and you get your $1,000 emergency fund, that does not change your credit score up or down in it. Baby step two, if you pay up all of your debt but your house, your credit score may go down some, but it's not going to go away because you still have a house for those of you who own a house. Baby step three, you finish your emergency fund of three to six months of expenses again. It doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank. It doesn't change your credit score. 
So get this. You have three to six months of expenses in the bank, I talking about ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars. You've got money for retirement, saving for the kids' college and a paid for house. Would you need to borrow money? Probably not. And not that we want you to borrow money anyway, but the bottom line is your credit score is not going to go to zero until all the way to baby step seven for those of you to own a home. And the interesting thing is the credit score was not made for you. The credit score initially came about for banks back in their early 40s and 50s, so that way they would not discriminate on their loan applications. Credit score didn't even come popular until the mid-90s, and over the last 20 years, our finances as households have depleted rapidly, and a lot of it has been because we use the FICO score as the means of are we doing well with wealth or not. When in reality, if you've got a good credit score, all that means is you know how to borrow money and you know how to pay it back. That my background has primarily been in the banking world. I have pulled lots of credit reports, and I can tell you from past experience, most people's credit score that are good are normally broke. They don't have any money in savings, very little in retirement, and if one bad thing happens, they're in trouble. So they borrow from the 401k, or they come in to refinance their house to, to do some things, and they're not winning. Case in point, before off the banking industry, I had a woman pull her credit report, and it was an 804 FICO score. Now, again, if you're in the 800, you're in the top 10 to 15 percent in the credit score world. She did a dance in her chair. She was so excited when I told her at 804. But as I was going through her credit report, I mentioned to her, uh, ma'am, is this true? You have a $1,666 car payment. She goes, oh, yeah, it's an Escalade out in the parking lot. $80,000 loan, $1,666 car payment with a $1,431 house payment. She brought home $3,000. Does anyone see the problem here? She owes $3,100 in payments for house and car, but only makes $3,000 net. And she was burning through her retirement, she was early retired, to pay for food, utilities, insurance, travel, trying to enjoy retirement. And she was going to burn through her retirement in five years because she didn't have the money, but she had a great credit score, so banks were loaning her money all the time. So again, the credit score is not there for you. The credit score is for the banks to make sure you can get a loan. So it is not a bad thing to have a zero credit score. In fact, it's a good goal to have, and you're not going to get there again until you're debt free. Some of you may be saying, but wait a minute, I don't have a house. I want to buy a house. Don't I need good credit to be able to buy a house? Well, let's talk about that. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac will allow you to borrow money on a home as long as you do what's called manual underwriting. Sadly, most bankers aren't aware of this term, manual underwriting. It's federal law, and you can do this. All manual underwriting simply is, is you're going to provide four accounts that are active that you pay on time every single month. This can be your utility bill, like electric bill, or a water bill, or a cell phone bill, or a phone bill. It can be your rent. It can be a gym membership, your Netflix membership. It can be auto insurance, renter's insurance, life insurance. Those are just 10 off the top I named that would work. You only need four that are active that you've paid on time for 12 to 24 months consecutive. And as long as you can verify that and get a 15-year fixed rate mortgage, you're going to have the same interest rates as someone with a high credit score of an 850. In fact, the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, or we call it ECOA in the banking world, the verbiage is this. Banks must consider alternative forms of credit when there is no credit score present. So you do have the capacity to do this. Should you have no credit score and you would like to find out where you could get a mortgage loan, which, by the way, is the only loan that I don't want to say we endorse it, my money wants, but it is something that we don't frown upon as long as you get it and then pay it off quickly. If you want to know a lender, we have several lenders that we recommend uh, that do not or that do do manual underwriting every day. It's not a foreign concept. Just email us at my or support at mymoneywellness.com. So in summary, with tonight's webinar, we talked about the free credit report. Again, annualcreditreport.com. 
you get one free credit report per year per bureau. We recommend you pulling all three throughout the year, or you can do it all at the same time, whichever one. And again, the, the annualcreditreport.com, there are three major credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. You're doing this to make sure it's accurate, and you're also making sure there's no identity theft. That's the reason why you're pulling your credit report. Your credit score. There are five major components to your credit score. Again, it's 35% is your debt levels, 35% is your debt payment history, rather. 30% is your debt levels, 15% length of time in debt, 10% type of debt, and 10% new debt. And then lastly, if you're going to go for a mortgage loan and you don't have a credit score, the good news is you can do that with manual underwriting. You just need four accounts that are open that you have 12 to 24 months consecutive pay history that you can prove. And if you can verify that, again, you can get the same rate on a 15-year fix as you do with a great credit score. Lastly here, before we open up the Q&A, um, we're changing lives here at My Money Wellness, and we're so excited to talk about that. And we just wanted to share a recent story. Uh, one of the recent stories is got a letter from a client from over a year ago who, when they came to my office, was just in tears and in struggling. And what had happened was she had lost her job. This is Shauna, who you see with her daughter, eight, daughter Ava. She lost her job. And when she looked back, a lot of it was because of stress caused by money in her marriage. Lost her job, lost her marriage, almost gave up on being a parent and gained a bunch of weight and lost all hope that life was going to be worth living. After one year going with a My Money Wellness coach for one-on-one -on -one coaching, she paid off not only $24,000. She now has three jobs, lost the weight, and has a boyfriend. So we here at My Money Wellness, we don't just care about your financial health. We want your emotional health to be better, and we know if your finances are on track, so will your relationships be on track. This picture came one year later after coaching. I found it on Facebook. I asked permission if I could use it. She said yes. That was the same smile that she had back in high school. She got it back. Why? Because she got her money in check. Why am I sharing this tonight? Well, we want to let you know as a My Money Wellness member, one of the things you have access to is great financial coaches from across the country. And if you are interested in finding out more about financial coaching, Simply email us at support at mymoneywellness.com, and we'll have a coach respond within 24 hours to see how we can best serve you. And now we're going to open it up to questions. Greg, I don't know what kind of questions you've got tonight, and uh, I'm going to turn you on your microphone. Give me a few seconds. Okay, Greg, go ahead and uh, fire some questions away. Great job, uh, Coach Justin. Uh, there was one uh, that was written in here. Um, I have heard that some insurance agencies will use my credit score to determine an insurance rate. Is that legal? Does that happen in the insurance agents, in the insurance uh, world? Yeah, great question, uh, uh, Greg. Thanks for throwing that question at us. Um, when it comes to your insurance, there are lots of things that factor into your premium, and I am not an insurance agent. but. What we have learned at My Money Wellness is the credit score does play a role in determining your premium, but it's not the ultimate be-all. So if you have a great credit score or a bad credit score, it may not be, should not be the only criteria. There are many criteria that figure into your premium. But here's the way to look at it. Which would you rather do? Pay credit card interest, have a good credit score, to have a lower premium on your insurance, or whether you, would you rather have a few more dollars in premium and not pay any credit card interest? There's no statistics, but from what I've seen based on experience, if you have no credit score, your insurance premiums just don't go up that much in comparison to the interest you have to pay to keep a great credit score. So yes, your credit score does play a part, but not enough to keep a credit score around just to have a low insurance premium. Great question. And the next one, one more time, uh, Justin, could you go over the fact uh, if someone sees a discrepancy in their credit report, um, how can we dispute that? If there's an error, how do we go about disputing that? And also you might explain just a little bit about you know, what these pages look like. What is it physically, that PDF when you print it off, what does it physically look like for those of us who haven't pulled it? 
Hey, you bet. So again, if you, you review your report from annualcreditreport.com and you view that there are some errors or some discrepancies or you're just not sure if that's quite right, there is uh, on the website, very visible, you just let them, and then we'll ask uh, if there's an error, let them know, and you let them know this is the error, and then they'll begin reviewing your case to see if it, in, in fact, is a valid error or is it legitimate, and get back to you within 30 days. Now, as far as the next question, Greg, that was asked, what does it look like? So once you get it, there it, it, again, it will show it to you. You can save it, uh, whether on your desktop or on a folder, or you can hit print. And depending on how long you've borrowed money, you might have two or three pages, or as one of my clients did, over 60 pages on their credit bureau. And it's going to show everything over the past 10 years from the day that you've pulled that credit report. Even if you've paid it off, or maybe it was a bad deal and it was charged off, the last 10 years' history will be on there. It's going to show whether you've made on-time payments with your creditors or you fell behind. It's going to show on there how much you borrowed, how much you have left to pay, what is your monthly payment, when's the last time that they reported to the credit bureau, when did they very first report to the credit bureau. And so most of these credit reports, that first page is kind of a title page giving you a 30,000-foot view. Afterwards, they just go right down each account, right down the line. So if you've got student loans, it's going to take in each individual student loan, and it's going to say, you know, loan from Sally Mae, uh, and then we'll give just a brief account number, not all of them, but part of your account number. It will say if you're current and good standing or if you're behind. It's going to say what your payment is, how much you owe, how much you borrowed, how much you have left to pay. And, and it will do that for all of your credit, for all of those things on your credit report. And again, if it's paid off, it will say paid off. Or if it was sold to another bank, it's going to say transferred and those kind of things. Usually there's going to be a key. Uh, so it's got some acronyms on there. Uh, it might say PO, which means paid off and it will just have different acronyms for you that way. And Justin, I think we have time for one more question. Um, this uh, just came in on the chat window. Um, how do you close an open account that has a zero balance on your credit report? Um, I may have a, a, that answer if you, don't, uh, if, if you don't have that at your fingertips. But again, how do you close an open account that has a zero balance on your credit report? Yeah, great question, Greg. And I would just say uh, I have the answer, but let's, let's hear from someone different. Greg, go ahead and share the answer for us. Well, we'll see if the answers are the same. But uh, um, and I ac actually, in preparation for this, was the person who pulled all three of my credit reports about two weeks ago. I think one of them was about 24 pages long. One of them was about 31 pages long. And um, uh, unbeknownst to me, um, you know, I had a, uh, a Capital One card that I had zero balanced probably six years ago had stopped receiving mail from them, all correspondence. We had even written in and asked for that account to be closed, and my credit report still showed um, that account to be open. Um, it did show Capital One, and it had the 800 number, so I was able to call them and just, again, request that that account be closed. So typically, um, what I'm finding, or what I found when I, when I uh, pulled my credit report, all of the uh, agencies typically had a, a contact phone number. Um, and if, if those that didn't have a contact phone number, you could do an easy Google search, find an 800 number, and then call them and say, look, I'm looking at my credit report. It shows that I have an open account. Do you show that? Um, and if they say, no, it is closed, then you would go back to the Resolution Center, which is on the website, and then just simply say, you are reporting that this credit card is open. That is an incorrect report, um, you know, please take care of. Very well described. I think you hit the nail on the head. Good job, Coach Greg. Well, thanks, everyone, for being here as a part of our webinar tonight. We have really appreciate it. Again, I want to thank Coach Greg for being co-host tonight and all the My Money Wellness coaches that joined uh, the Your Credit Score webinar this evening. Thank you again so much for being a part of it tonight. And uh, have a great evening. Thank you.